Now there is a short introduction to visual music which refers to the use of musical structures in visual imagery. It also refers to methods and devices that can translate music and sound into visual presentation, including the translation of music to painting. Even Aristotle tried to find mathematical explanations for the relationship between pitch and color. He assumed that the color spectrum ranging from dark to light could be matched to a spectrum of pitch from low to high. But until the 17th century, scientists and artists didn't have quantity ways to connect music and color. It was Isaac Newton who tried to solve the problem by positing that musical tones and color tones have frequencies in common. Following his work, the French composer Jean-Philippe Rameau designed a harpsichord with color strips of paper that rose above the cover of the instrument whenever a particular key was hit. Unfortunately, the strips could only be lit by candlelight and this lacked the power to evoke a convincing visual experience for the audience. The invention of gas lights in the 19th century created new technical possibilities for the color organ. The British inventor Alexander Wallace Remington, professor of fine arts, was the first to use the phrase color organ in 1893. His almost three meter high color organ looks like a common house organ with a compartment on top of it with 14 colored lights. The light of the lamps could be controlled by the performer in gradients of color tone, lightness and saturation. In the 19th century, visual artists considered music the highest form of art and believed that music approached the ideal of an immaterial art form. Delacroix wrote the following on the subject. Lights and so forth. That is what one could call the music of the painting. Even before you know what the painting depicts, when you enter a cathedral and you are at too great a distance to perceive what it represents, that magical chord can strike you. The Dutch symbolist painter Janus de Winter exhibited works with titles such as Musical Fantasy, Wagner. He described his synesthetic perception. Trombones, horns, trumpets vary from red to yellow. Oboes, clarinets and flutes vary from dark brown to olive green and dark green to light yellow green. Cellos from red or brown violet to blue and purple. Violins can express any colour, which are always blended with silvery grey. Beethoven's music appears with lots of red, but also purple, violet and exquisite green, silver and grey, while Chopin evokes dark colours. In 1911, a German artist group, the Blue Rider, was formed, which involved a group of painters, composers and dancers. The group wanted the unification of arts by means of so-called total works of art, Gesamtkunstwerk, achieving freedom of expression through abstraction. The Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky helped to prepare the ground for their experiments with his theory of synesthesia. He explains that when he heard the performance of Wagner's Lohengrin in Moscow, the music evoked a fantastic vision of colours and lines. After this early discovery of synesthesia, he later began to notice that the sounds of musical instruments had distinct colours for him as well. A trumpet and the brass band sounded yellow. A viola and a warm alto voice had orange colours. A tuba and drums evoked red colours. A bassoon sounded violet. A cello and an organ produced blue and the sound of a violin evoked green. Kandinsky's interest in synesthesia can be observed in his well-known pictorial compositions from 1910 on, which also marked the beginning of abstract painting in the history of art. Music, especially jazz, was an important inspiration for the Dutch painter Mondrian. He considered painting a static art form, 
and he wanted to add other dimensions to his paintings, not only the third dimension of depth, but also the fourth dimension of time, both of which he did by means of visual suggestions of movement. He wrote that the perception of reality was chained inside the forms that are dictated by the classical art of painting. To liberate this perception from its chains, the visual form had to be destroyed so that rhythm could be released and given its freedom. The synesthesia of movement in visual grids, which remained a central theme in Mondrian's experiments, culminated in the Boogie Woogie series, which he painted in response to the sounds of the music played in local jazz clubs in New York. Anne Soltz, a Dutch contemporary musician and visual artist, perceives music in coloured patterns. A fine example of the expression of her synesthesia is her painting Vivaldi. The painting represents the opening of the concerto for four violins. I listen to the music while I paint. First, the music gives me an optimistic, happy feeling, and I perceive red, yellow and orange colours in great variety with little contrast. It looks like a field of these colours. I perceive the colour field as a musical chord. You can compare it with the colours of a blanket or a cover made of autumn leaves. She explains that the painting is not a copy of what she hears. Rather, when she listens to music, she perceives more colourful textures than she normally perceives, and she is able to depict them in the painting. She also expresses the movement of the music as its energy influences the pictorial composition. Look at my paintings as if you are listening, sound after sound, colour after colour. In time, it gives an impression of how I see, hear and experience the music. Mark Rowan Hull is an Oxford-based artist who uses his synesthetic visions for creating his artwork. He does performances across the UK and abroad where he creates images live on stage as a visual translation of the music. I mean, what I'd like to do actually eventually is, is to surround an audience with colour so that, um, that I would be painting and the, the experience of the brush stroke would actually be revealed in a surrounding sense, which is what I feel. Um, so I'd, I'd love to um, you know, be in a constant environment and the audience were actually surrounded by projections of, of what I was actually doing, rather than watching me in a sort of medieval way. But I do like the medieval way as well. I, I like the sort of idea that I'm there and they're there. And, but it would be nice to surround people. Artists in the earlier centuries did not have the technical advantages we have today. Since the 1950s, rapid advances in computer technology created new digital instruments and brought sound and colour art onto a new level. Given the capability of the internet to publish and share digital productions, this has led to an avalanche of synesthesia-inspired art on the internet. Using digital art to express synesthesia involves more than applying some computer algorithms that arbitrarily translate music into colours. Windows Media Player can already do the trick for you. The challenge is to find a form that truly shows some new aspects of synesthesia. This is what I'm trying to achieve in my artwork. Goodbye. Money is honey, where can my honey be?